came up in the time of tape, and most of you guys are recording into DAWs right now. There's a very big difference in the sound. And I, and, and I have been noticing and learning this whole thing as well, too. DAWs sound, they have one sound that's a different tool compared to tape. But sometimes I found with a DAW, tape doesn't always sound better than a DAW. Tape, because there are times, depending on the song, depending on the context, I've actually AB two different things to try and see it, and the DAW thing won out. It was time when we did mixes to a, a two track, and we listened to the two track mix, and, and back in the day, when I, when I was working with Jeffrey Osborne, we always mixed the two track, we always took that to master, but there was a couple of songs as a backup, we mixed to a Panasonic DAC. And a couple of songs that the Panasonic DAC actually sounded better for that song than the two track because the two track made it too big, made it too, it, it rounded out a couple of things and all that. So that's why I say it gets back down to knowing the subtleties of the tools that you're using because they all add a whole completely different thing. And I'd also say too, if, you, if any of you guys got um, old cassette recorders, Little things like that, don't get rid of them. Don't get rid of them. You know, them old things that you think are obsolete, they may come in handy one day and give you that one little extra thing to inject within your tracks. That's the key. You don't necessarily have to even run your old mix or run everything through it, but maybe run a couple of key things through it. And that'll give you a whole other thing. Al said, and it's one of my things too, when I do my presentation, I'll talk about acoustic EQ. Because one of the biggest lessons I learned when I was ignorant first got in and I was got into the business into, and thrown in a room with multi-Grammy winning engineers and I'd watch them and see them not doing nothing in my eyes. My ignorant self thought, oh, I can do what he does. You know, he ain't doing nothing. You know, I thought to be an engineer, he had to turn knobs. You know, thought he had to do all this stuff. Same thing when I watched studio musicians. I would listen to guys on these records and everything. I can play as good as him, you know, because they, they, you know, they're doing real subtle things, tasty things in and out and everything. So yeah, they, you know, you want to, uh, somebody else said, but the basic thing is, is, you know, these guys hire people that play at things that we have to work at, we have to struggle at. These guys play at, you know, it's, 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 it's nothing for them to do. So when you, you know, watching a guy like Quincy Jones in the studio, and you'll see Quincy come in, and they leave five minutes later, and then you know you watch and think, that, okay, well, this is Quincy Jones. Why ain't he in there doing all this and doing you know? No, he hired the cats. He ain't got to stand hard over mm -hmm. there. He hired the right. But if you watch Quincy, he can walk in and say, oh, change that, you know, F sharp to nat F natural. Move this. You know, he'll hear it all right there. And know exactly what it needs. And walk back out. I'll do your thing. That's why I. Have it.